number two is remote control number three is convenience of input form number four is compensation for the disturbance okay okay so these are the four advantages we have we built control system for mainly for these purposes now let us elaborate them one by one now if we talk about first one with control system you know we can move large equipments with very good precision that otherwise will not be possible so control system what we do we can move larger equipments with a great precision that otherwise would be impossible and also we can point huge antennas you know we have antennas huge antennas we can point the huge antennas towards the farthest reaches of the universe so we can uh, point huge antennas towards the farthest reaches of the universe and then also to we can pick a very faint signal a very small signal a very less signal it's a very even a weak signal can we can pick to pick faint radio signal controlling otherwise if you control these antennas by hand and that's all that's almost impossible so what is the advantage that we can we can have it? nowadays you can see you have antennas you can get any station all around the world even from the america in from the uh, you can say european countries you can watch any channels so we can point our huge antennas uh, towards the larger distances where the countries will be at a very large distance farthest which is beyond our reaches also of the universe and we can pick up the signals and that otherwise would have been impossible without using a control system now because of the control system we have already seen that elevators will carry us quickly to our destinations automatically and then what will happen they will stop at the right floors so because of this control system we have already seen this elevators carry us quickly to our destination and then automatically starting stopping at the right floor at the right floor now very good advantage of control system we have seen for the elevators elevators will what do they will carry us quickly to our destination maybe first floor second floor third floor and then automatically they will stop there and otherwise uh, without control system it was not possible for us now next is there are robots who are designed robots are designed by control system principle and they can compensate for the human disabilities you no know, robots we know there are different types of robots now 
robots are designed by designed by the control system principles can compensate for human disabilities can compensate for human disabilities what does it mean now wherever human being cannot have an access wherever human being cannot go it will have an the access for the human being will be difficult then we can uh, develop design the robots and the robots will be doing such uh, ro robots will be doing the work there or robots will be going to those uh, difficult places for example control systems are also useful in remote or dangerous locations okay there also useful in remote or dangerous locations now what is going to happen for example a remote control robot arm robots you can you can make a robot arm different robots you can make nowadays you have heard about the china that china are even developing the army which may be robotic in the future that's a biological uh, man they are uh, robots they are preparing for the super next, soldiers yeah super soldiers yeah exactly the right term very good so this is also a, basically how they have developed this is based on the uh, principles of the control system now let me have a, a robot control arm can also be used to pick up material in the radioactive you know radioactive environment is there suppose there is a fission fusion processes uranium are there and other radioactive elements are which are very hazardous for a human being so to have an access there or to go there a human being has to have a lots of precautions and again it will be very dangerous for his health so in order to avoid to go in order to avoid to go to these locations or uh, travel or have an access to these locations it is very difficult for a human being to have an access to these locations so we use uh, robots and they can go and pick up the material for us and they can put that in the process and whatever the things we want to do with that they can dump it at the appropriate destination so i can say example is a robot control or you can say a remote controlled robot arm can be used to pick up can be used to pick up material in the radioactive environment so radioactive environment is very hazardous for the health of the human being so we can prepare a remote control we can control that remotely and send that arm there that can pick up the material for us and it can dump it at the right destination so this is another advantage of the control system another is control system can be also used to provide convenience by changing from one form of the input let me explain this control system can be used to provide convenience by changing convenience by changing the form of the input what is the meaning of this for example let me take in a temperature control what we have in a temperature control system the input is position on the thermostat now we change the position on the thermostat that temperature condition will change the output is heat in a 
temperature control system what is the input is the position on the thermostat so we will keep at this position this position and accordingly heat will be produced and output what we require we require a desired output as a heat so thus convenience input position that means the thermostat input position yields a desired output the yields a desired thermal output so very easily we can control system can provide convenience by changing the form of input it's very easy so here we can say convenient input position yields a desired thermal output in this case temperature control so let me have an example here in a temperature control system in a temperature control system the input is a position on a thermostat input is a position on the thermostat and your desired output the output is heat now by what you do the convenience input position yields a desired thermal output here convenient input position yields a desired thermal output so that's the by changing the form of the input so another advantage of control system is ability to compensate for the disturbances another advantage of control system is ability to compensate for disturbances for example that means it will compensate there will be disturbance it will compensate for it now typically we control variables such as temperature in thermal so what we are doing temperature we control these variables that is temperature in thermal systems okay and then we can say position and velocity in mechanical systems in mechanical systems okay then we have also voltage current or frequency in electrical systems frequency in electrical systems these are examples that in, in when there is a disturbance and control system can compensate for those disturbances and we have different variables that can be controlled we control such variables such as temperature in case of thermal control system in thermal systems whereas position and velocity in the mechanical systems and whereas the voltage current and frequency in the electrical systems okay so next is the classification of the control systems okay now when we talk about the classification of the control systems there are sir, different base yes uh, sir please aap wo third point repeat kar sakte hain convenience of input form wo mujhe acche se samajh nahi aaya uska matlab kya tha sorry okay no problem 
Now, this third po point is control system can be used to provide the convenience by changing the input form. What is that? What, what does that mean? That means, suppose I am having a thermal control system. Now, how I cut, uh, control the temperature of the room? Now, temperature of the room can be controlled by using a particular position on the set point will be a position on the thermostat. That thermostat, when you input is that you position the thermostat. Thermostat is a type of switch in case of the temperature control system. So you position that at an appropriate place. Then what you expect from them? Then you expect from them an amount, a particular amount of heat, this much of heat should it should be it should generate this much of heat so that uh, this position of the input will be at a particular position and this much of heat will be obtained so what basically you are going to do in a complete system you are doing that you are positioning a particular uh, you are positioning a particular input on the thermostat that means you are placing a particular position on the thermostat switch with that position, what you are going to yield, you are going to yield the desired output. That desired output in case of this is a thermal output. So meaning is that if you position an input, that will yield you that is going to yield you, yield you a desired output. So that's that's the meaning of the changing the input form. By convenience, you can you, by convenience, you can provide a convenience of changing the form of input that can be used in the control system. By changing a particular position on the switch, you are able to get the desired output. So that's the second question that we may have the open loop or closed loop systems. That's the second question. But by positioning the switch, you are going to get the desired output. That's that's the meaning of it. I hope this is clear now. Yes, sir. Thank you. OK, now classification of the control systems. If we talk about the classification of the control systems, there are different bases for the classification of the control systems various bases but we are not going to go for the all types of configurations we are mainly going for the two types of configurations so i'll write here there are different bases for classification of for classification of control systems css control systems the various basis of types of control systems can be there but what we will be classifying we will be classifying it on the basis of the configuration now based on configuration Now, based on configuration, what is the based classification based on the configuration? Now, this basis will relate us to the arrangement of various instruments for control purpose. There will be arrangement of the instruments, whether they are in the closed loop, whether they are in the open loop. So we will arrange the various instruments for controlling a particular thing for controlling a particular quantity or for controlling a particular process and in this case also the adapted control philosophy will play an important role how we are controlling it. so this classification is this relates to arrangement of instrumentation various types of instrumentation for the control purposes and what is the basis of con control philosophy that what type of philosophy we are adopting to control a particular process variable so that is this type of so i will write here sorry this basis so sorry yeah can write uh, this basis yeah i can write like this the basis of of the configuration relates to 
अरेंजमेंट अरेंजमेंट ऑफ वेरियस इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन अरेंजमेंट ऑफ वेरियस इंस्ट्रूमेंटेशन फॉर कंट्रोल पर्पजेस एंड वट टाइप ऑफ कंट्रोल थ्योरी वी आर एन एडोप्टेड कंट्रोल फिलोसफी ओके सो वॉट आर वॉट इज द कंफिग्रेशन बेस्ड ऑन कंफिग्रेशन बेस्ड ऑन कंफिग्रेशन रिलेट वट वी विल अरेंज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू अरेंज एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स अरेंजमेंट ऑफ इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स हाउ वी आर गोइंग टू मेट फॉर कंट्रोल पर्पज एंड देन वॉट इज द टाइप ऑफ मैथडोलॉजी इन कंट्रोल सिस्टम वी आर गोइंग टू apply so two main categories are described below so there are two main categories are as follows so number 1 is a open loop control system and number 2 is a closed loop control system number 1 open loop control system number 2 is a closed loop control system so two classification are based on the configuration the main purpose you have to remember how we classify them we have to arrange the instruments how we arrange them for control purpose and second what type of philosophy we are going to now first is we'll talk about the open loop control system very important things this from um, understanding point of view okay now you should open loop control system these systems are open loop control systems are those systems in which the output has no effect on the control action these are those systems point number 1 there are lots of points important points those systems in which output has no effect output has no effect on the control action so these are called open loop control systems okay open loop so what is the meaning of this now see what we do if in a any type of control philosophy what we we are giving an input reference input that will go through the process that in reference input will be processed and on the basis of the process we are going to obtain a desired output we will be getting the actual output then if we are not satisfied with the actual output we will again see the difference between the reference input and the actual output and we will feed it to the error uh, error controller we will feed it to the error controller and then then that they will it will see the difference between the two and the loop will keep on moving but in this case whatever the output is there control there will be output whatever the output we are getting after giving the reference input and going through the process it will have not impact there is no impact on the control action we are we are not going to have any sort of loop or any sort of control action that can be influenced on that can have some influence on the output so it is it's not that type of uh, philosophy where we can have an effect on the control system we'll see that you, we are getting the actual output but we are not getting it to desired then we need to make some manipulations by giving it this uh, value to the input again and seeing what is the difference between the reference input and the output no we don't have any sort of any sort of mechanism in this case so here whatever the output we are obtaining and it will not be having any effect on the control action we are not going to provide any control action in this case so those systems are called open loop con con control systems now what does that mean further in other words we can say open loop control systems the output is neither measured nor fed back for comparison with the input so here in these systems
output is neither measured we don't measure the output nor fed back for comparison with the input nor fed back for comparison with the input so here you have to remember that we don't measure the output we obtain the output we don't measure it and neither we give a feedback to the uh, input and we compare the difference between the actual output and the reference input we don't compare it so we don't do all these things whatever output we are obtaining we obtain it and we get the output so how we are doing that there are certain things let us move ahead so these two points are very simple points output is neither measure we don't measure it neither we send it to the input for the comparison so that reference input and actual output is compared and the error which is developed will be sent for the further processing that is not done in this case one pra practical example let me say a practical example now everybody will be having a washing machine in their houses now what we do with the washing machine now washing machine soaking washing and rinsing i think i think now you soak the clothes you wash them you rinse them in the uh, with the help of the washer we have a motor that will be running that washer inside it so soaking washing rinsing in the washer operate on time basis so what are the things we have in the washing machine soaking washing and rinsing i hope you know the meaning of all soaking means putting the cloths in the tub in that cylindrical tub of the washing machine washing means it will motor will be applied vigorously and that will uh, try to vibrate this all cloths that will try to move here and there this cloths with a vigorous uh, velocity so that the uh, dirt will come out and rinsing rinsing is a sort of wherever the particular dirt will be there that will be cleaned so that's a rinsing we we rinse wash and soak but that is a time based in the washer operate on time basis now what does this mean time basis see whenever her uh, boys they will not be doing this at all maybe some girls which are present in the class maybe sometimes helping their mothers to wash their clothes nowadays it is very easy to wash we have automatic we have semi automatic we have fully automatic washing machines but the best out of them is a semi automatic ma machine for still uh, automatic machine has still problems in india because that is not getting a better quality in terms of lots of things so i need not discuss here i'm not here going for the i'm not going to have a lecture on the marketing so what is basically happening here is you have a washing machine you uh, use your inlet pipe and with your faucet you give supply to water supply to it you fill it and you fill it up to the particular place then what you manually you drop the Uh, laundry that means the cloths which are dirty you will drop it there then soap case will be there and you put it the soap there once you put the soap and you switch on uh, you place a timer that means for the 10 minutes or 5 minutes there's always a timer on the washing machine so you will put a dead timer complete so once you put the timer and you switch on the switch on the uh, washing machine switch and the timer will start moving as a result because motor will start operating in the in this washing machine and it will start washing the clothes after soaking completely and uh, soap will be there it will start washing clothes and you wait for the washing of clothes till the timer will have a buzz it will have a buzz and you will come to know that okay first round of washer first round of my uh, washing has been completed that means i have put the washer for the so many time and but what you are doing here you are operating the machine on the time basis that means 5 minutes 10 minutes 2 minutes 6 minutes but you are not laying emphasis on the quality 
the machine does not measure the output signal. What is the output signal here? Output signal is cleanliness of the clothes. So very clearly, this system will be treated as an open loop control system. Why? Because we are not working on the quality of, or we can, we are not working on the measuring the output signal. Output signal, what is our aim objective here? Our aim is to clean the clothes. We should get a better quality in, in terms of cleanliness. In terms of cleanliness, we, we, we should, we need a better quality. But our aim is that, but are we filling our objective? Not. We are just putting the timer on the time basis. We're allowing it to run for a particular time and hoping that by this much of time, the cleanliness will be better. So we, our, our objective here is on the timer. Objective here is timer, but we are not working or we are not uh, measuring actually the output signal because this, this sort of uh, manipulation or this sort of operation is not working on the output signal. That is the cleanliness of the clothes. Hence, it's a very clearly a washing machine is a very clearly an open loop control system where the where we are not going to get a feedback in terms of the output signal, which is cleanliness. We are not going to get a feedback from the whether the whether the clothes have been cleaned or not. We are not going to measure that signal. And once we are not going to measure that signal, so we are solely and wholly on the mercy of the time that okay, the time will be more and the clothes will get cleaned. So this is a cope, this is a clear cut example of an open loop control system. So I will write here machine. does not measure the output signal. Machine does not measure the, what's the output signal? That is, that is the cleanliness of the clothes. Cleanliness of the clothes. Your objective is to clean the clothes. There should be no dust and other things on that. But actually, you are not, you're, you're not measuring that signal. You are just merely on your time. You hope that if time is more, clean, clothes will get clean. So very clearly an example of the open loop control system. Okay. So what happens in the open loop? Let's further explore this open loop control system. Now, in any open loop control system, the output is not compared with the reference input that you already know. In open loop control system, output is not just a second. Hello? Hello? Hello?
कि सॉरी थोड़ा सा काम आ गया था आई एम सॉरी जस्ट सेकंड नमाज का टाइम हो गया अभी टाइम है नमाज डेढ़ बजे दो बजे बहाने मत बनाओ तुम नमाज के ठीक है सेकंड मुझे इसका पता नहीं कहा गया सेकंड ओके ओके नाउ व्हाट वी टॉकिंग अबाउट we are talking more about the open loop control system so washing machine we have finished now in any open loop control system you can say that output is not compared with the output is not compared with the reference input so we don't compare the output with the the reference input that we have seen already what we do here to each reference input that is how many ref we, we we what we will put we'll put a number of reference inputs there will be a corresponding fixed operating conditions as a result what will happen the accuracy of system will depend on the calibration so i will explain the calibration what is that afterwards so i will first write down this now what we will do to each to each reference input what we are doing in this case the corresponding to each reference input there corresponds a fixed operating conditions as a result what will happen as a result the accuracy of the system depends on calibration as a result the accuracy of the system will depend on the calibration so what is the meaning of calibration see what we do basically we have number of reference inputs so suppose input 1 input 2 input 3 we have number of reference inputs we will give give now each to each reference inputs there corresponds a fixed operating conditions so we have fixed output here fixed output here fixed output here so that means the accuracy whatever the accuracy we are getting in the results will depend on the calibration what is the calibration basically have you heard about this calibration so see calibration means if we are saying that this is a 1 meter and i'm saying this is 1 meter but you are saying that no no sir this is not a 1 meter this is more than or less than 1 meter so then we do what we go we measure this according to the standard measurement that means there is a body for this called weights and measures body weights and so the weights and measures body whose actual that means whose whose all the this measurements actual measurements are in france that 1 meter is how much the actual measurement is there another thing 1 liter is how much actual measurements all those you know the reference measurements are there in the france so we cannot every now and then if there is a discrepancy in any of the weights weights and measurements device weights weights and measurement quantities then every now and then we cannot go to the france and see okay this we have to do so what 
every country has do in a, in our particular country we have a weights and measures body so if there is a discrepancy you can go to the weights weights and measures body compare your instruments accuracy with that of the uh, you know with that of the master meter or the master uh, you know master uh, you can say device a master device which they will be having and they will compare it and see and they will give you the results so this is the way the authenticity of a particular measurement is done in a country so now calibration means if we are doing a calibration we know that let's say a pressure temperature or any of the meters or even our uh, you know volt meter or any other meter has lost its accuracy that that means if it's a digital meter we are we are not having an accuracy or analog meter then what we do we calibrate it who calibrates it third party what is the meaning of calibration they will compare the measurement of this existing voltmeter or existing instrument with a device which is which you, which means the whose uh, accuracy is 10 times more than a normal instrument accuracy is normally we say whose accuracy is a 10 time more more than a normal instrument that means that's a master instrument so the voltmeter accuracy whether that's a reading of voltage or some other thing mainly the voltage we are comparing here so that will be compared with the master meter so that comparison is called the calibration so the discrepancy will be seen and the discrepancy if any will be nullified and then a third party will come out and they will put a sticker on this voltmeter that this has been calibrated and calibration is valid for so and so date so com comparison between a known quantity and a device any instrument and a known uh, instrument whose we know that whose accuracy is already authenticated comparison between those two is called a calibration so in case of an open loop control system if we are talking about the open loop control system then we say its accuracy will depend on what its accuracy will depend on the calibration so for every time we have this if if we say this is the input then we know this is the output if this is the input then this is the output so we have for every input conditions for every reference input we have fixed operating condition and we have placed that in the instrument so that fixed operating condition will only dependent how long we have how what is the time of calibration how we have calibrated do do we have, do we have uh, done calibration recently or is calibration still valid or it has expired so that will depend on that so that's why we are saying that this accuracy of this type of system will only be depend on accuracy of the system depends on the calibration so this is the calibration comparing the accuracy of any device with a known uh, standard device that means which is accepted by the weights and measures body when you compare that and then you can say that okay this is fine or whether it's not fine that's called the calibration so i hope uh, today we have sala and uh, we will we'll stop here only we have some more things in the open loop control system and then we'll be emphasizing on the examples of the open loop control system and we'll continue i think we'll shift this class to some other day because aaj uh, juma hota hai to we'll we'll be shifting this to some other day i will just tell this to the time table in charge